we'd never met each other. We didn't know each other from, from Adam when we walked in the room that day. But no matter where in the country, our stories were the same. The schools don't discipline, they suppress, and they threaten. And the uh, students who come and want to learn have lost their rights. Okay. So we came back from those meetings pretty moved um, to take some action. Uh, this is how we got connected with Kevin, because um, we pretty quickly, even before I met DeVos, um, we started attending the school board meetings to petition. Um, and that's largely what we want to say to you guys tonight, is that we have been finding in our efforts over the last three quarters of a year that community activism, and I don't mean, you know, going out there and antifa things, but going to the board meetings and speaking up makes a difference. Okay? We are finding it is effective by respectfully going to our leaders and raising public awareness and being clear and concise and asking for intervention, we are finding that it is starting to work. Um, we've got to get the voters educated, and that's a challenging thing to do, because we are the government. We are the government, and we can change the course if we can get folks educated and motivated to get out there. Um, we started a Facebook group, and that's how we educate folks. We're a little over 1,600 members right now. Um, our impact was sufficient enough with the U.S. Department of Ed that Trump's team contacted us about a week and a half ago. Uh, the Federal School uh, Safety Commission and asked for us to submit a package for the commission's consideration as they consider repeal. I submitted that package at 2 a.m. this morning. <laughs> right. was awesome. We had a lot of stuff. We got testimonies from folks all over the country. Um, it really was a neat mix. We had some media. Well, actually, we had a lot of media. A lot of media. Uh, Fox 45 Project Baltimore has been exceptionally good at researching and supporting uh, safe school efforts. So has so we've been published in Fox News, we've been published in uh, The Federalist, The Weekly Standard, HuffPost, that, that was, was a forced interview, <laughs> The 74. Um, that was also interesting. Washington Times, Real Clear Investigations, The New York Post. Um, we really do know and have a couple of folks like-minded folks that want and understand the nature of what we're going through and want to see change. So um, we're able to make a couple of phone calls and get stories put out there pretty quickly. Sometimes, it just um, depends on the story. But I will tell you that Fox 45, those folks are uh, like their most recent uh, episode. Uh, they met with Max Eaton. We are good friends with Max. Max is a public policy uh, and education specialist from the Manhattan Institute. He is exceptionally well written first in this. Um, they are going to start expanding this. They're not just talking about Baltimore County. We're talking about the country. He's got 74 other affiliates, the executive producer does, that he is in regular contact with to expose the truth. So we are constantly funneling them truth, <coughs> statistics, information, stories. Um, I did send him John Eckblatt's uh, testimony. This gentleman was attacked by a 15-year-old student in a school in Minnesota to the point where he was unconscious. Um, he had major back injury. Uh, he had traumatic brain injury. Um, the uh, Bloomfield, Bloomfield, Bloom, I don't remember the name of the local school system, is suing him so that they don't have to pay workman's compensation or unemployment any longer. Um, the teachers union basically kicked him to the curb, didn't do a single damn thing for him. This man's police report was 168 pages long. And I can tell you that there is very little that will appall me now. But reading these accounts over and over and over again, it took three people to get the stoop, his hands from the guy's neck, blue. Three. The student didn't get charged. Well, I'm sorry, he did get charged. He's not been prosecuted yet. That just blows my mind. That happened. Uh, 20 months ago. So we we have connections. Um, the more stories that we can bring to light, we can put light on bad things that are occurring, the more we can get 
others to join in as well. Well, and that and we have to find ways collectively to encourage families and teachers, although it's harder to work with the teachers because they're so frightened. But the families are discouraged. We were discouraged. This is our most valuable resource. It's hit in the, in the heart and soul of who we are, and we feel powerless. And a natural response to powerlessness is to not take action. These families feel discouraged, even as we've been gathering for the last week and a half. This is the Trump level commission of the federal government who contacted us and said, we want a ground report, send us stories. And families contact us night and day. We're on the line until sometimes one o'clock in the morning. We had trouble getting people to write stories. We're like, guys, this is the moment. You are going to send this to the Trump team. You are going to the top. They're making the big decisions. And still it was trouble because they, families feel so discouraged. They feel like no one's gonna help them. And they, they aren't completely inaccurate in that. They're, but, but the way to get the help is first to draw the light. I've been covering all the things that have been happening in Dundalk. There's a lot of shootings around the schools, so it is very important what's happening in the schools, but also outside. We need to protect our kids as they're coming in and out. So um, if you could reassure uh, the people of Dundalk that you're there for them. Dundalk TV is working very hard. Doug Stanley's here. He actually um, uh, did a report with us. Some of the other you candidates have as well. Scott, absolutely. In answer to your question, we stand beside the families of Dundalk who are concerned for the safety of their children getting in and out of school every day.